Hello and welcome back. My name is Radha and you are watching another Beyond the Boundary live chat with Women's Crick Zone, where we talk to players, coaches and others to find out a little bit about their lives off the field, their journey within the cricketing setup and other interesting anecdotes. Now, the ICC Player of the Decade Awards were announced very recently on December 28th and there were two names that stood out when it comes to the Women's Individual Awards and we are very fortunate to be in conversation with one of them Scotland captain and all-rounder and the ICC Women's Associate Player of the Decade, Catherine Bryce. Catherine, thank you for coming on, agreeing to chat with us. It's a pleasure to have you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thanks very much for having me on um, and Happy New Year almost to everyone. Say right back at you. So first off, you know, congratulations on the ICC honour. It's no small feat to be crowned the Player of the Year, let alone the Player of a Decade. And, um, you know, what was your reaction when you heard the news? Yeah, I was just really honoured um, to be thought of in the first place. I didn't really, wasn't really aware um, of the award until um, it was kind of put out there on Twitter um, a bit ago. Um, and yeah, there's some fantastic, fantastic players um, that were also shortlisted for the award. So yeah, just really honoured to be to be uh, awarded it. Right, and you and you mentioned Twitter, and that was like leading up to my second question, where um, I saw a statement thanking and accepting the award, and I noticed something, and I always kind of look out for this, and I was really happy to see it, where you thank the women who came before you and who sort of paved the way for the Scotland national team to be where it is today, and how important do you think it is to sort of mention them and acknowledge them too? Yeah, I think it's it's really important because we wouldn't be we wouldn't have a women's cricket team in Scotland if it wasn't for um the few people that actually started up the team in the first place about 20 years ago um so I think we've got a long way to go still but I think it's it's important um especially in these sort of times to remember how far we've come as a nation in the last few years right and I think that women's cricket is in that sort of phase of exponential growth and anyone involved wants to leave the game in a better place than when they found it so Picking your brain with a like a really vague question here, but you know what what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? I know you have a long way to go, but yeah, do you have any thoughts on maybe what you want to leave behind as a cricketer in Scotland? I think part of it is the way that you play cricket um, and the way you go about it, but not not just to be remembered for a cricketer, but also a role model um, for all these young girls. And I think you sometimes forget how much of an inspiration it is just to see um, a female performing um, and seeing them do well on an international stage. It's actually a real inspiration for younger people. So kind of leading by example in that way um, and making sure that you kind of set a good example um, for everyone that's, that's coming following your footsteps. No, absolutely. And I think there is sort of this this um, youth of women's cricket up and coming that are going to be role models for the next generation. So, you know, let's just take it back right to when you started playing. How did you get into it and who did you maybe look up to um, as a cricketer? Yes, yeah, I played a lot of sports um, when I was younger and um, cricket was always kind of around and about in the household um, on the TV, watching all the test matches and everything like that. Um, and then I was lucky enough to there was a girls cricket team at the school that I was at so it was pretty much the only school in Edinburgh that had a girls cricket team um so Liz Smith set that up about at least 30 years ago now I think um and yeah so I just kind of went along to that started playing cricket um really enjoyed it um carried on going and then got invited along to some of the Scotland number 17 training sessions um and just kind of went from there really yeah, and I think you started off quite early, um, you know, as a very young when you got into the under-17 side and you, you've been um, throughout the Scotland sort of ranks um, up till date. So, you know, and um, many times your, your team sort of becomes like your sisters and they become your family. But in your case, you had your sister with you throughout this entire journey. So can you tell us a little bit about how it was to sort of go through this entire experience with your sibling by your side? Yeah, definitely. I think when I started playing cricket, um, Sarah just kind of was always around and about watching, coming along to games. Um, she was also very sporty as well, so just throwing balls around. Um, and so she came along and started playing as well. So I think it's, yeah, it's really special to to have your sister there through through all the ups and downs. Because um, I think you can be away for quite a long time, um, going away and being in different countries. So having her there... Um, yeah, I've always really enjoyed it, being able to share the success um, as well with her. 
Yeah, and um, so you, like about two years ago, you were named the captain of the Scotland side and you sort of took over from Abby Eichen, who obviously has been captain for eight years. And um, do you sort of, can you tell us a little bit about what she was like a leader and maybe what you took some qualities that now you lead your side with? Yeah, I think she was just always really welcoming and easy um, to talk to. If you ever needed anything, she was always there um, to kind of look out look out for you um but I think yeah just that was probably one of the the main things kind of taking from her kind of going into it is um that connection with the players um but I was fortunate enough that she's still playing um when I start took over the captaincy so still had her her knowledge and experience um and guidance of it's not just the things on the field but all of the other small things like when you're at tournaments doing um having to do the captain's press release and the pictures and everything and she'd kind of go haha you've got to do all of that now um, <laughs> but also being supportive and kind of helping me through all of that right and you mentioned your relationship with your teammates I mean last year has been um or the past year has actually been pretty tough on teams across the world so can you tell us a little bit I know like tournaments were cancelled and there were a lot of adversaries that maybe you were not foreseen so how did the team sort of maintain team chemistry and continue training in this circumstance yeah, I think we're really fortunate in this day and age. We've got Zoom and everything to be able to keep in contact with each other. Um, so obviously we weren't able to train fully um, or at all really um, in, in lockdown. Um, but I think keeping in contact with each other, whether it was for just a coffee um, catch up um, or we did a few different activities, um, but also gave us a good opportunity to do a few different um tactical exercises that we might not have necessarily had as much time to do and um, did a few psychology sessions um, with the psychologist and um, so I think it was obviously a really challenging time and people obviously struggled in in different ways but I think we managed to come together as a team and kind of keep each other going through through a difficult period. Right I guess that is the silver lining where you you did something that you might not have done in the first place and um, I wanted to ask you here where we don't know too much about the Scotland team at least um, from India let's say so um, can you tell us a little bit about how the girls are like and what their personalities are like and how driven they are and what a training session is like? I think there's a real mix of personalities in there so there's quite a few girls that have been around for a long time so um, Lorna Jack um, has been around for I don't even want, want to guess how many years um but she's a big personality in the team and kind of keeps keeps, keeps people going um, and obviously Abby as well who's who's been there for a long time just kind of having that experience and and that calm head um for the girls that are younger to look up to um and there's there's quite a few younger players in the team as well there's probably a bit of a gap in the middle um so to kind of see them come through um, and just kind of the youth and the the excitement they've got for learning um, and just wanting to ask as many questions as possible and develop their game as much as possible. Right, and you mentioned that they're all on a like a massive spectrum when it comes to experience um, within the setup. So as a leader, how do you sort of get the group together and say, you know, how do you make the best out of everyone's experience and really put out a good unit um, in a match? Um, I think it's important to, to kind of to encourage people to to use each other's different experience because actually sometimes when you've been through quite a few different things you think you know you know what to do in a certain situation but actually a fresh set of eyes of someone who might not have been there before um might actually come up with something a bit different they might not have thought of um so i think um just kind of making sure there's an environment there where younger players feel able to kind of communicate and ask questions um, and make sure they're as comfortable as possible. Right and you and your sister are sort of making headlines in uh, being the the new set of sisters or siblings playing cricket and I actually wanted to talk to you guys about um, education and I know you, you both are pursuing your master's side by side and how important do you think education sort of factors into uh, a sports person's life or an athlete's life? Yeah I think it's been really important um, to kind of have that a bit of the balance um, between training and at Loughborough University, really lucky that they're used to having um, top level athletes there and finding ways to balance your study with with also um, playing international cricket. Um, so we've been really fortunate there, um, but I think it's really important. Well, I've really enjoyed 
having something else to do alongside alongside the cricket um, and being able to have that kind of going forward in the future as well. And I think there's a lot of experience and stuff you learn having just kind of been through the university experience. Yeah, I know a, a lot of people have um, sort of mentioned over and over again that education also teaches you things that you can use on the field. So it is a, it is a good balance to have both of them. And I want to sort of go back a little bit to, um, you know, the Scotland cricketers not being uh, fully professional and full time athletes. So how, uh, did you ever have any doubt in your mind that this isn't a career that I can pursue and I don't really see any pathway into becoming a cricketer? Yeah, I think it was always quite difficult growing up. Um yeah there wasn't wasn't necessarily um a pathway for becoming a professional player unless you played for one of the, the top countries like England or Australia or India um so I just always really enjoyed it and didn't really think too far ahead um about what was what was to come and kind of just hoped that as I got older there'd be possibility of being able to do it alongside or having a some sort of job that was flexible enough um to be able to do both um but now obviously with the, the professional contracts uh, with Loughborough Lightning and um, I think that's that's huge in terms of the women's game and in young girls actually seeing a potential for the for them to be professional cricket cricketers without being at the very top top level. Yeah we have comments coming in congratulating you and I think that is a it is a sort of a big step as you mentioned because um, a lot of people now can see this as a pathway and see people right at the top and um, be inspired by cricketers like you and um, I wanted to ask now that sort of there is this platform and I'm sure there are a lot, there's a lot more media coverage and eyeballs on you and the Scottish team. Do you have any message for the young girls and boys back home on um, becoming a cricketer and representing your country? I think just take it step by step and just enjoy it as much as possible where at whatever stage you are. Um, and I think just to work, work hard wherever you are and kind of you take whatever experiences you have at the at the time um because i think yeah if you if you try and look too far ahead then you you probably are never really happy with where you are at the moment so always striving for the next level but at the same time kind of taking in all the experiences that you've got where you are at, the, at that at that time right and that's perfect and you are an all-rounder you sort of bowl at the top of the order you bat pretty high you you're leading your country i mean what can't you do at this point so i wanted to ask you on a personal level what do you enjoy more is there something that you can say that i i enjoy opening the attack with the bat or with the ball um i really enjoy opening opening the bowling when it's swinging um and yeah that's really enjoyable but i think it's it's good in in the way that if one doesn't go well, you've got the other one to kind of fall back on a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've always enjoyed, and I think it's partly like my captaincy as well is kind of leading from the front and um, leading the team by batting, bowling, and fielding, um, and for, really feel like I can put my team in good position um, from that way. So I think it all kind of links together. Right, and um, 2021 obviously it's a big year. You have the regional qualifiers at home. Um, how are preparations going on for that? And um, yeah, just tell us a little bit about what the plans are for the coming year. Yeah, so we've hopefully got, so unfortunately one of the, the series in November is cancelled because coronavirus is difficult at the moment. Um, but that's hopefully going to be rearranged for some time in March, I think. Um, so we'll have a good good few months, hopefully before that, and to kind of get back into training and get prepared for that tournament. And that will kind of be the start of the summer, ready to go. Um, and hopefully have a couple other series throughout the summer to kind of prepare us ready for for the middle end of August um, to play to play the regional qualifiers. Fantastic, perfect. So we have a lot of questions coming in. We're gonna take a few from the audience. Yeah, there you go. So uh, Sudarshanan is asking, how do you manage to keep your personal equation with Sarah aside when you are leading Scotland or whichever side you're playing for? Yeah, I think. Um, We've, we've, I've captained her for quite a while uh, now through the under 17s as well. Um, we've got a good understanding um, between each other, um, and I know um, that her advice is very valuable as well because um, we kind of understand each other very well. Um, and I think it's always, always been quite quite simple to kind of take like the personal side of it as well. Obviously, being proud of her. Um, as a as a teammate as well as a sister um but she's she's performed for scotland for years so it's it's quite easy to kind of 
let her get on and and do whatever she does and she she gets on and does it very well that's brilliant we have another one coming in um right here who is the toughest bowler to face excellent question um i think one of the toughest bowlers i've i faced is sophie eccleston um a left arm spinner so yeah she's obviously one of the best bowlers in the world at the moment um just as a spinner with her height as well uh, really challenging yeah and she's been um sort of doing her thing in the t20 challenge and other t20 competitions around the world i think we have one more coming in yeah right here mohan wants to know your favorite international players which international side other than scotland would you love to play for if you had a choice um international players um i've always enjoyed watching lise perry uh, play i think seeing her as a as a young player kind of doing doing everything um as a real athlete batting bowling um and probably england um so my mom's english so i've always had a bit of association with them before um and obviously watch i uh, grew up watching them play a lot of test cricket as well Right, and you mentioned Elise Perry. You've been sort of now given an ICC honor alongside her, which is pretty awesome. I mean, if you ask me. But it seems like we have a lot of questions coming in, so let's go right to the next one. Yeah, Pooja wants to know. You've been given a retainer contract with England. Um, is there a chance uh, for you to switch to play to England in the future, like Kim Garth leaving Ireland for Australia too? Yeah, I think it's is a possibility, and probably thought about about it more. Um, when I was younger, and there wasn't this the, the the possibility of kind of being able to play for Scotland and also have the professional contract um for lightning cricket, um I think it, it probably comes harder to to change and move across the better that Scotland do. So if we start qualifying for World Cups um and things like that, then I think hopefully the the, the women's game in Scotland is moving in a similar direction, and hopefully there'll be some contracts coming in for Scottish cricketers as well. Yeah, and I think you guys are sort of totally on the right path. I mean, we—I I think personally, I, I'm really looking forward to what Scotland's going to produce in the coming years. And all the very best to you um, and the team. We have one last question for you from the audience. Ananya is asking, um, how much of your experience playing in the KSL and the RFH Trophy helped with your development as a cricketer? Great question. Yeah, I think it's been huge. Um, really, I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time in Australia as well with the. The WBBL, um, and I think just being around those professional cricketers just kind of showed me what it was like. And um, then, and then kind of playing in the KSL last year, you just have to raise your game an extra level because you're playing against international cricketers and some of the best in the world. So you have to just be so much more specific about everything that you're doing. Um, and I think that really helped me, my cricket in general, just making it as specific as possible and making training um, just even more intense. Yeah, and I think you mentioned raising your level, and as soon as you do that and you go back home, then your entire team raises their level, and I think that's how development, growth, progress is made. So that's really nice to hear. And um, those are all the questions. So once again, a big congratulations to you for the honor. And uh, any last words you would have for anyone listening, um, yeah, to this conversation? Yeah, I think just keep supporting women's cricket as much as possible because I think it's going in an incredible direction and hopefully it'll just keep on developing over the next few years and into something really exciting. So, yeah, just keep enjoying it as well. And thanks for having me. Okay. That's great. And keep supporting women's cricket, keep enjoying it. I don't think you can get any better words than that. Thank you, Catherine, again for joining us. This was Beyond the Boundary Live with Women's Cricket Zone. Stay tuned for more such videos and we'll see you guys next time.